Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for stopping by. Today I have a full day of Crock-Pot meals planned. One is gonna be for lunch. It's actually already cooking right there behind me. Another I'm gonna throw in for dinner and then another I'm gonna make that Derek can eat for lunches this upcoming week because we have a super busy week. We have a lot planned today. I didn't wanna spend a bunch of time in the kitchen cooking. So that's why the Crock-Pots are coming in handy today. So why don't we get started? I decided to make us a little lunch in the crock pot today, so we're actually going to make a taco lasagna. Uh, I'm cutting this recipe in half, just so you're aware, but I'm going to need one pound of ground beef, some taco seasoning, cream cheese, enchilada sauce. The recipe does not call for corn, but I thought it sounded good, so I'm going to add some corn, black beans, salsa, some cheese. You can use cheddar. You can use Monterey Jack. I got some cheddar jack and then four tortillas. So I cut these, don't laugh, they look kind of funny, but I cut them to fit my small crock pot since we're just eating this for lunch, I didn't want a huge portion. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and ground, brown my ground beef and add a little bit of taco seasoning to it and then I will begin to assemble the lasagna in the crock pot. I completely forgot that I was supposed to put the salsa in at this point as well, so I didn't do it here, but I did add the salsa before I put the meat in the crock pot. In a bowl, I added my softened cream cheese, a little bit more of the taco seasoning, and I stirred that till it was well combined. Then I added in some of my black beans and mixed that as well. Now it was time to start building the lasagna in the crock pot. So I started with some enchilada sauce at the bottom, followed by one of my tortillas, the cream cheese mixture, a little bit of corn, some meat, which this time did have the salsa in it, some cheese, and then I just repeated the layers until I was out of ingredients. I topped it with a little bit of cheese, and then I set my crock pot to high. So this has been cooking for about two and a half hours. Look how good that looks. Only problem that I didn't think through is how I'm gonna get this out of here. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. It's probably gonna be a complete mess, but I'm gonna try my best, put it on a plate, and show you what it looks like. So it actually wasn't as hard to get out as I thought it would be. Look at that, it looks so good. And there's still quite a bit left in there, so we're gonna dig into that as well. I would sprinkle it with, with some cilantro. I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of parsley and call it a day. All right, well, that was super easy. We're gonna go ahead and enjoy our lunch. So this is probably one of the easiest recipes ever. I'm just gonna make some fajita chicken so that Derek can throw that in some wraps this week for a really simple lunch. So I am only gonna make a small portion. I'm probably only gonna use one of these chicken breasts. I already cut up half of a white onion, so I'm gonna use that. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle in some taco seasoning. I'm not gonna add liquid to the crock pot because the juices from the chicken will kind of leak down to the bottom and I don't want it to be too juicy. So I'm gonna show you how I do it, and this is so simple. I'll just put it on high, let this cook for probably two hours or so until the chicken is done, shred it up, and then I'm just gonna put it in the refrigerator. So my chicken is done cooking. It's been in here for a couple of hours. So I'm just gonna go ahead, pull this out, shred it up and get it ready to put into the refrigerator. And there you have it. You can see it's got some juice in there, but it's not too juicy because you don't want your, your tacos or your fajitas, whatever you make to be too soggy, but it's got just enough in there. It's got good flavor. The onions are nice and tender. So this is gonna be a terrific lunch. So I'll just let this cool down a bit and then I'll put it into the refrigerator. 
I am super excited about tonight's dinner. I absolutely love a low country boil. I get it every time we go down south to Hilton Head. So today I'm gonna to try to make it in the crock pot. We're just gonna need some shrimp, some, I'm using kielbasa, you can use andouille sausage too, some baby red potatoes, garlic and onion, some corn on the cob, bay leaves, some Old Bay seasoning, lemon juice, and also some hot sauce. So I'm gonna combine my hot sauce, lemon juice, and Old Bay with some water. And then we're going to put our potatoes, our onion, which I'm gonna slice into wedges, and also our garlic and bay leaves into the crock pot. And then we'll add that Old, Old Bay seasoning mixture to it. We'll let that cook until the potatoes are about tender. And then we're gonna add in some of the other ingredients. So this has been cooking for about three hours on low and I just checked the potatoes. They are just about cooked through and tender. You can see how nice the color is in there. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and add my kielbasa to it. I'm gonna let that cook for probably 20, 25 minutes. Add my corn in. So let's get the kielbasa in. So we're just gonna stir that in. Cover her back up. Oops, and I forgot to mention, I am gonna turn this up to high. All right, that kielbasa has been cooking for about 20, 25 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my corn in. It says to use three ears. I ended up buying some frozen corn at Meyer, and it had four ears in there. So I'm just gonna put all four in. down inside the juice. Nestle those in as best we can. My crock pot is getting pretty full at this point. Okay, that's good enough. So I'm gonna cook this for probably about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna add my shrimp. Okay, so our final step is to add the shrimp. So you're supposed to use raw shrimp, but I happen to have these already cooked shrimp in the freezer and I wanted to use them up because they were starting to get a little freezer burn on them. So that's okay, that's gonna be fine. So I'm just not gonna cook these for quite as long. So I'm gonna put those in, just get them mixed into the broth. And then I'm gonna wait until these are warm all the way through. I'm guessing it's probably only gonna take about 20 minutes or so. I'm gonna keep my crock pot on high and when it's all done, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so my shrimp are done. So this is ready to serve. So normally what you do is just drain it and then you would dump this out onto some newspaper. I'm not gonna do that. So we're just going to grab some of it. Put oh, come it... on, I really love the taste of ink. Well, who doesn't? But unfortunately we don't have any newspaper. <laughs> so we're just gonna put some into a bowl. How many corns on the cob are you adding? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure we get the kielbasa in there because that's one of the best parts. Okay. All right. So the flavor in this is fairly subtle. If you want a stronger flavor, you could actually use some beer instead of all of the water. But I'm just gonna cover this with a little bit more Old Bay. We're gonna put a little bit of melted butter on it because everything is better with butter. And then we're just gonna sprinkle some parsley over the top for color and freshness. And there you have it, an easy and fairly healthy dinner. Now we're gonna go eat. Well, that's gonna do it for today. I really hope that you enjoyed these recipes. If so, please give this video a thumbs up so that I know you'd like to see some more crock pot recipes. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.